Hey, Karu. It's uh, the evening of the 2nd of May, and I am in a hotel room in Ireland. So, Craig, if you're watching this, here's a shot of Ireland. Not very interesting. Just the airport, airport hotel in Dublin. Um, but... That means we are no longer in Wales, unfortunately, and no longer at Isbren. However, there's one last uh, twist to the story of getting Isbren going. And that's the exciting bit from yesterday, which I think it's hard to argue that yesterday wasn't the most exciting day with regards to the house as far as I'm looking at my wife to... Eventful day. Eventful day. Eventful yes. day, yes. Yes. Um, no, it was hard to argue that it isn't. Yes. It probably was, yes. It was the most eventful day. Um, so, I should tell that story, shouldn't I? So what happened was, we got up in the morning, and I had been skeptical that we would be able to get, that, that Carl and and Ian would be able to get the bathrooms done and cleaned out before kind of early evening. Um, just because, you know, I think you saw in the video the state of the, those rooms. And they had to take the garbage all out, clean things up in addition to the, to the work they had to do. But as it turned out, they showed up early and on time. Uh, they... Uh, finished, completely finished, the bathroom in the back room, um, and they were done with everything but the fan and the fan switch in the other bathroom by 10 o'clock. And uh, Ian had brought his van to take all the garbage out, and he had moved, they moved all the garbage out of the rooms down into the front hall to stage it to take it out. And uh, so 10 o'clock, things were looking really good. And they thought they had maybe an hour's work left. And we were like, yes. And so, of course, they went to uh, take a break. I don't know what they were doing. They were out getting something to eat, I think. And, um, and Sarah was already up cleaning the back room, working away. And I was, I still haven't finished processing photos that I took two days ago. So I was working on processing those photos and I heard this noise and it sounded like something fell. And it wasn't like a god awful crash, but it was like something had fallen. And so I went upstairs and I said, hey, Sarah, did you hear that? And she goes, what was that? And she said, it wasn't me. And so I went up and looked in the other room where there were they had been working, and the uh, the vacuum cleaner was in there, and and the you know the arm of the vacuum cleaner looked like it had slid down the wall and bounced off a desk, uh, which would have ex kind of sounded like the noise I'd heard, and I thought, oh, vacuum cleaner just fell, so I go back down and I sit back on my computer, and about three or four minutes later, the front doorbell rings. And I go and open the front door, and our neighbor, Jan, is out there with a couple guys speaking Welsh. And they start speaking to me in Welsh, and they point it at the ground. And I look down, and there's a massive piece of cast iron gutter on the sidewalk in front of our house. And I look up, and the piece of cast iron gutter about six feet long that split Jan's house and our house had fallen and put a hole in the lead roof of the entryway on our side and actually a chunk of the gutter had embedded itself in Jan's lead roof and broken off and was stuck in there. And the next piece over on Jan's side was hanging down with one side up attached by God knows what. And the two guys work for Gwyneth Council, and they happened to be walking by on the other side of the street when this thing came down. 
And so um, I picked it up and it had to weigh 50 pounds um, at least. And <clears throat> the interesting thing is that I had been out there, the first thing I did that morning was go out and pressure wash the sidewalk. And I had been out there pressure washing the sidewalk probably 20 minutes before it came down. Um, and as Sarah said, it's, it's remarkable that this cast iron gutter that probably had been there for, I don't know, 50 years, could have been there 100 years, came down the last day, last full day, we were, we were in uh, Carnarvon. Um, so Sarah made a little video, which I'm going to cut in here, which she, she sent to, to um, Carl. Uh, so I'll cut that in right here. So look what just happened. Dan says, what did you do, Carl? <laughs> so Carl and Ian came back immediately and they spent the next four hours arranging for someone to come in with a cherry picker so they could take down the pieces, the other pieces of, of gutter that they were afraid were gonna fall. It turns out the fascia um, behind the gutter was rotten. And so the bolts just came out. Um, and uh, that whole thing with Carl up there on the, and I've got footage which you're gonna see here of Carl up on the cherry picker, but what I didn't film was, so he pulled down that first piece of gutter and he's controlling the cherry picker. And I can't remember, I think he brought the first piece down and he went back up to get the next piece over to check and see what it was. And he gets up there, oh no, he still had the first piece in, in, the, in the thing with him, uh, in the cherry picker. And he tries to, and he starts pulling on the, the, new, the, the other piece and just to test it. And he's like, if I let go of this, it's gonna fall. And the, there's a, a van, that, so the cherry picker's on a trailer and the van is attached to it, <laughs> right, right in front of the house. And he's like, if this falls, it's gonna bounce off. First, it's probably gonna break our, our um, windows in the front or bust through the roof of the, um, uh, the bay window. And then it's gonna bounce off and hit the van um, of the guy that brought the cherry picker. And so he's trying to figure out what to do. And eventually, um, I think, what happened? I mean, like, uh, we managed to get a, a screwdriver to him initially and then, and then a, a drill, but then he ended up with, I think two, two pieces of gutter in the, in the cherry picker with him. And, and he's a big guy. Um, Carl's a big guy. He's like six, three, six, four. Um, and he's like, I don't know, probably, he's probably close to 250. Yeah. Um, and he's got maybe not that much, but at least 220 or 230. And he's got a hundred pounds of cast iron in the thing with him. And then the cherry picker shuts off and it won't work because it's overweight. And so he's stuck up there and he can't get the cherry picker to move. Can you put that one in the tray, fix it you and then just get that one as well? And that's the And so eventually, somehow, like, uh, Ian was throwing stuff up to him, like, you know, it's 30 feet up. Ian's throwing stuff up to him. He's catching it and, and doing stuff. And eventually uh, he, um, I think he, the, the guy running the cherry picker, well, the, the first thing we did, 
the guy running the cherry picker wanted to move his truck, his van out of the way in case something fell. Carl asked him to, but he's he's hooked up. You know, it's on a it's on a ball. You know, a trailer hitch, and he can't get away from it because you can't move it because Carl's up on it, and um, so we all stood on the back of the van to lower it enough so he could pull out, and then he drove it away to get it out of harm's way. Then he came over and manually um, used a pump with the hydraulics to actually move Carl over and bring him down and set down the the extra sections of gutter and then they had to reset it so Carl could they could control it um, from the from the uh, basket again anyway it was this crazy thing and it ended up it was probably 2 two thirty when they were done when they finally got everything taken care of and the guy left and and in the meantime like we're out there on the street directing people like this huge tour group of like 35 people comes walking down the street and they all have these earpieces in and woman speaking to them and and as they come up Ian's like we got to move these guys over to the other side of the seat street so I walk up and Ian walk up and we're trying to get him to move you know across the street and they they didn't speak English and it turns out I hear one of them speaking Spanish um, and so the the woman who was the tour guide came up to me and you'll appreciate this Karu um, and I said ahí por favor and she was like, oh, you're speaking Spanish. And she was, she spoke English to me, but she was like really excited that I spoke, that I just said that to them in Spanish, asking them to, to cross the street. Um, and was all I could muster at the moment. But um, yeah, so eventually they got um, all those pieces down. Carl went back up and sunk a bunch of screws um, into the existing, uh, the, the piece of gutter that he left up there because uh, he was just worried if he kept pulling them off, one of them was gonna just collapse and fall down. So he tried to put in a few extra screws to hold them in. Um, they've arranged, it's gonna cost us a bomb to bring in um, scaffolding and replace the gutter. Um, when we left today, Jan, our neighbor, apparently her brother, is a roofer in Liverpool. And he just showed up and set up uh, scaffolding and started working on hers. We did um, email the council and get permission because we're a listed building and technically we're supposed to have permission um, for an emergency setting up scaffolding and replacing the gutter. And so that's gonna happen soon imminently like they were going to bring in the scaffolding friday right that's tomorrow um so yeah uh all's well that ends well we're just going to be uh lighter in the pocket for it um it could have been way worse you know someone could have been uh, someone could have been killed honestly it was it you could have been yes yeah, yeah sarah said i if i were out there you know half an hour later um if i'd started pressure washing half an hour later it could have could have hit me um, so yeah, and it, and it, it doesn't seem to be in any way related to anything anyone was doing. It's not an area anyone was working on the house. It just, um, you know, it just, the, the, the wood, the wood's rotten, you know, it's, it's old and it needs to be replaced. So they're going to go up and replace the fascia and, um, and put in new gutters and, uh, one more thing. So. Uh, that was an exciting last full day there, um, and uh, we are now, we, we cleaned the house, we staged it up, I took some photographs, I, I went around and did um, 360 degree images of every room for uh, Matterport model, which is a 3D walkthrough of the building, um, <clears throat> and I did all that today. Unfortunately really uh, pressed for time. So the Matterport model wouldn't upload. And um, I think it's too big for the free subscription. So I'm going to try to figure out how to do that. 
fix that at some point. But that can all happen later, assuming that you know all of the all of the 360 scans that I took work correctly. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Tomorrow we fly home. Um, it's going to be basically 24 hours of travel. Um, not real. I mean, we're going to get up and we'll probably arrive in Pullman 24 hours after we got up. So uh, I'll keep you up to date with what's going on uh, in the future.